and the whole auditorium, you know, stood up, stood up, and took their hats off <laughs> and like unbuttoned their shirts so they could get their hand close to their heart, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're sitting there, We're sitting like, sitting down. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Welcome to Disenthrall. Recently, I saw a few videos by Cal Moline. Uh, I'll link him in the description, where he was at a Liberty Conference. I forget what the exact name of it was, but he went around to various people at the conference and he was asking each of them five questions. At the conference, he talked to a, a few different people, including Jeffrey Tucker, Nick Gillespie from Reason Fame, and uh, I think a, a random agorist... Um, Socialist somebody it was very interesting. Anyway, I'll link the videos in the description But what I liked was the five questions and I liked the five questions because it really uh, very quickly put someone that calls themselves um, a libertarian or an anarchist on the map Very easily tells you exactly where they sit on the spectrum So I wanted us to give a, a crack at each of these five questions oh, shit. Uh, Just to oh sh okay <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. This is where Patrick finds out I'm really a communist. <laughs> All right. um, number one, how do you define a free market? Ryan. Market. As I said before, a market that's free. <laughs> I feel like that's a strong answer and I'm going to stick with it. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Tucker said a matrix of unimpeded voluntary interactions, which I liked. Um, I also like... Uh, defining it as basically what exists when there's no force involved. So anything outside of a coercive situation is the free market. Mm -hmm. um, another one is uh, uh, basically, uh, again, from Jeffrey Tucker, it's what we do when we're left alone, basically. That's a free market. And by that, I mean... <laughs> You know, if we're left alone, we are going to trade. We're going to, you know, I'm going to have certain uh, products that I value more than products that you have. And we can voluntarily trade in a state of peaceful uh, coexistence and uh, being left alone. Yeah. I wanted to go straight to like anti government. So I was going to say like a market where you can freely exchange goods and services. And uh, without um, any interaction from the government. That's what I thought it said. Um, do we have a free market today is question number two. Hell no. Hell no. That was my note. You took <laughs> my <laughs> answer. <laughs> Hell no was my answer to that question. Uh, no. So um, are we are we left alone in today's market? Um, I... I and to answer this question, I you know immediately just reacted and I said no, we absolutely don't have a free market. Um, no, we're close. But yeah, to to try and answer it from the opposite direction, I said, can I think of a market or a thing that I could, a market that I could participate in that's still completely free? And so then I started like backing into the question. I'm like, okay, is dating a free market still? And I kind of think it is. I, I I couldn't I couldn't find any coercion in dating uh what else um healthcare absolutely not um prostitution prostitution <laughs> i mean it's illegal but like no it's not a free market no way if you if, if you um are cool with operating outside the limits of the law then no no, no that makes it not a free market oh. it doesn't behave at all like it would if it were a free market <laughs> because it's shady <laughs> And back alley. <laughs> yeah, but it's totally like, yeah, I'll have sexual intercourse with you for money. <laughs> uh, no. no, no, no. So like, um, you know, I, I can't even go to the grocery yes. store and, and perform a free market transaction. Like, um, employment is not a free market transaction. You can't hire somebody um, free of government. You can't can't buy property. You can't own property. You can't. Um, Dating. That's literally like even when you move from dating to marriage, you're you're moving out of free market into something oh, yeah. that's that's regulated and has tax consequences, you know? So the the government um the government's involvement in marriage changes some people's opinions on whether or not marriage is right for them. So that so even once you move from dating to that, I don't think it's free market. That's interesting. I was, what happens if you like go out in the middle of nowhere and have like an interaction with somebody? Like what? 
I don't know. You're like you're like in Alaska, and you go on the like top of freaking the tallest mountain in the United States, and <laughs> there's a guy living up there, and you trade like a fish for a napkin. <laughs> well, like uh, that doesn't. I mean, doing something in secret doesn't make it a free market. It just means you're doing it secretly. Yeah. And I think having to do it secretly means it's not a free market, right? Yeah, but not, that's not like a direct effect. That's what do you mean? Like doing it because doing it in secret because the government because you're trying to stay away from the government is not like directly affecting. It's not like directly affected by the government. They're not like we taxed that that transaction. You're just doing it because you don't want to be affected by the government. But that's still not necessarily a state of freedom because it's not. I'm just because saying, the prices I'm, may be different if you have yeah. to do something in secret. If you're if you have to go into a private secret scenario to conduct a certain type of business, the prices will generally be higher because there's a higher risk involved. Mm. Because if they're found out or if they're discovered, there will be consequences. In my example, right? there wasn't a higher risk involved though. You just happen to be in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, shit. My face is dirty. I need a napkin. Can I have... I'll give you this fish. I love, I love your example. I'll give you this fish. <laughs> well, <laughs> but there's a risk involved in him selling you... Uh, taking your fish in exchange for... You know, because if he... If the government finds out that he's doing business... Trading off the books... Then he'll get penalized. He'll get fined, right? Mm, that's weird. So he might charge you an extra fish for your so, napkin. <laughs> what are we talking about? FBI agents up on the top of the tallest mountain in the United States. SWAT teams love that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like, shit, yeah. High altitude busted, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that was, do we have a free market today? Right. I think it's pretty clear that... Yeah, Like that's an easy one. I still can't think of anything besides dating. If you guys can think of anything besides dating, you know, please post it in the comments. Yeah. Question number three. How would you define anarchy? Uh, I mean, the uh, easy definition is without rulers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, I think it almost is a parallel to free market. If it's not the same thing, it's basically what we do every day in our life mm -hmm. with our relationships with people that are non-coerced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I wake up in the morning and I kiss my wife, good morning, that's anarchy. That's a peaceful um, coexistence, um, peaceful relationships um, there's no force, no coercion involved. So I think like the elimination of force and coercion from human relationships is a big part of the definition of anarchy for me. Mm. So like everyone should be completely free of coercion in all relationships. And it's a big part of it. So yes, definitely no rulers. Um, yeah, but I, I would add that on as well. Yeah. So like, um, you know, personal choice. Consent is basically the hint. I think consent is like the linchpin of anarchy. Like the, the morality is based on consent. Something cannot be moral if it's non-consensual. And to me, like anarchy is uh, uh, consent is like the bread and butter of anarchy. Everyone, it has to be consensual. Um, otherwise it's coercive. Mm. Uh, so that's a big part of the definition for me as well. And I would also point out for people that think we're crazy uh, for calling, for associating ourselves with the term anarchy or anarchist, I would point out that I think the, that in general, um, 99% of your life, I think is lived in, in a state of anarchy. So like, you know, in your home life, in your, um, in general, not, I mean, yes, you know, your your employment is regulated and the government does have some involvement and force in your employment situation. But for the most part, you know, you choose to go to work every day because it benefits you. So for the most part, um, or to a large degree, at least that's a voluntary relationship. When you choose to leave your house to go to the store, when you, you know, put gas in your car, I mean, uh, for, for in, in a lot of ways, we and we would we prefer to live our life in a state of anarchy. Like if we we when we when you choose who you date and marry, that's that's anarchy. That's you having free choice in your life. Mm. And um, and I think at a like instinctual base level, people reject attempts to remove that anarchy from their life. Like if if somebody suggested that the government start you know, choosing who everybody marries, like arranging marriages, people would lose their mind. Mm. Um, 
And, and that's, that's because, you know, they would resist the regulation of something that right now is very anarchic. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like a, like a boiling toad over time. We lose, you know, our aversion to certain aspects of our life becoming uh, regulated and non anarchic, so to speak. Anyway, I'm diving way too deep into a lot of this stuff. Right. Question number four, does anarchy allow for political rulers? Exactly. I think it's <laughs> so like I ask a question and I've got all this deep stuff in my head and he's just like, no, <laughs> that's, that's it. Straight to the point here. That's it. So uh, the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even understand that. It goes against the definition. Um, I mean, certainly you can. The government, the government body of anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, certainly you could uh, pay someone or contract with someone to represent you in a certain capacity. Uh, you could even, you know, voluntarily uh, empower someone else to speak for you in certain matters and in, in, in sort of a way you could vote for them. Um, but definitely not in the in the way that, you know, voting works today. Mm. Like, um, you know, if, if you vote for someone today, they're no they're under no contractual obligation to do what you want or to, you know, you can't fire them on, on a whim if they do something you told them not to, or, you know, there's, there's no repercussions or that, you know, they don't truly represent you. Right. So, I mean, we, we, I'm not suggesting that it'd be the same kind of voting that we have today. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But could you elect someone to rule you? Well, what's the definition of ruling, right? It's, um, it's, it's the absence of consent. It's someone being, having the power to tell you what to do against your consent. And that is uh, definitionally opposed to, I think what anarchy means. Yeah. So that that'd is, be, that'd be rough. So in short, no, yeah. well, <laughs> I just they, with that. It, it would work like it should be working now, where like they would want to do everything in their power to do to make you happy, um, and if they didn't, then we could fire them, right? Which is how it's supposed to work now, but it totally doesn't. So uh, they would be fired. Well, yeah, if it were if it were a consent based um, arrangement, yeah, then. If I elected someone, it would only be for me, number one. Yeah. Like, I, you know, my representative would be Patrick Smith's representative. And the only way he would be someone else's representative is if someone else also yeah. asked him to be to represent them. Yeah. I was talking and, in a scenario where we every, a whole bunch of people voluntarily elect a leader. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So assume a whole bunch of people voluntarily pick one person to be their personal representative. Yeah. And I keep using words like personal because that's the big difference between our current system and and um and what we're talking about mm -hmm. uh but it, i mean if everyone you know if a lot of people all voluntarily picked one person to be their representative there's nothing inherently immoral about that until that representative forces those people's ideas or beliefs or opinions on people that didn't vote for him right or uh or until he does something that any of the people he um that that elected him disagree with right and I think that would totally happen. That's why I don't think that's possible. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Would, he would get hired and then subsequently fired. Immediately. <laughs> yeah. Immediately fired. Yeah. So, yeah, 20 people would hire him and immediately 19 of them would fire him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. And they'd go find other people and it would be nothing like anything we have today. So, yeah. question number five, which I think we already just kind of talked about, is do you vote? Yeah. So, <laughs> done. <laughs> done. Uh, and why? Oh, man. That's. That's a hard one, right? I mean, okay, to go not to go deep into it. Summary. It's immoral. Yeah. <laughs> not to go deep into it. It's immoral. <laughs> simple, simple. Right. Uh, and this, I think we're going to get into some conflict with a lot of minarchists, with a lot of uh, big L voting libertarians. Um, and I think that this topic definitely deserves an entire video. I mean, uh, we can't just say voting's immoral and leave it at that. I think yeah. for many people, they would make cases like... Um, uh, for a libertarian voting for a smaller government, you're voting in self-defense. So everyone else is voting for people to force, you know, higher taxes and bigger government on them. And libertarians are voting in self-defense saying, no, you're not allowed to do that. You don't have my permission to do that. And um, I think uh, I think that that discussion will definitely take more time yes. than, than we have today. But it's deep. Yeah. So certainly um, 
anyone voting for larger government or voting for anyone that results in um, higher taxes or continue even content, not necessarily hyper higher, but continued taxation. Anyone that votes for continued government coercion or government force, uh, those that is a certainly and provably easily an immoral act. Uh, and we, we can definitely go into that later. Uh, voting for smaller government, I think we need to make that case so that everyone's clear on what we're saying. Um, but yeah, no, I absolutely do not vote, will not ever vote again. Mm-hmm. I voted in the past only basically out of ignorance. Right. And um, yeah, I'm done with that. So anyway, so I thought those were five questions that you know instantly spark really easy, cool discussion with people uh, yeah. about where you sit on the spectrum. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like, it was easy for us to answer, I guess, but... Uh, probably the um, libertarians would be would throw in a lot of what ifs and exceptions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and all those questions. Yeah. So the self defense is the main argument. Yeah. Like it's self defense. My vote is in self defense. And Lysander Spooner has a lot to say about that. Um, so before we do our video on on the morality of voting, I'm definitely going to go back and read some good old Lysander Spooner philosopher badassery. Yeah. And. Uh, and get caught up on that. But yeah. All right. Uh, the next thing I wanted to go over was, uh, I saw a recent article on there by, uh, that Ron Paul wrote on the Ron Paul Institute website, uh, talking about the United States preventative services task force, uh, has decided that, uh, depression screening should be made mandatory, uh, to be paid for by all health insurance companies. So um, basically, and I assume that means you're going to get taxed or penalized if you don't go get your depression screening. Most likely. Which is just, I mean, this is like right out of 1984. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they would go and, you know, you'd get diagnosed or whatever. It's yeah, every morning you had to do your like exercises and they would play like yep. the state music through the speaker and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so aside from like, you know, really getting conspiracy conspiracy theorist, you know, crazy town land. It's just really freaking creepy that the government thinks it has the right to look in and, 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 and take an assessment on everyone's mental health. I mean, so much bad could come out of that. I think even before you get there, like we haven't even locked down exactly what depression is, like what it's caused by and how to fix it. Like some people, it's there's still like varying opinions on what, how ex- what exactly is going on in someone's brain because shit, the brain is super complicated. We don't know about everything that's going on. So, like in, even these um, medications that people get on are like are doing more harm than good. So yeah, the, the, all the psychotropics that are, in my opinion, and the opinion of some therapists are extremely overused right now. Yeah. Um, and do have negative side effects. I think yeah. some, uh, quite a bit of the mass shooters that we've had recently have been on psychotropics prescribed, right? right? Well, I'm saying, so like, how can we say like, oh, that guy's depressed, that guy's not depressed. It's like, well, pff, your definition is whatever you say the definition is. And, uh, and you know, the vast majority of people suffering from depression, you know, I, I can see like uh, uh, like the the PR for this is like you know if 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 people that were depressed knew they were depressed and could get help then we as a society would be better off. But like what do you, what do you think the government's going to do with this information? I mean, if it's mandatory, that means they have to keep a log of who's had their screening done, and if and if they're and if it's mandatory, they're going to want to. Um, Make sure that the screenings are done properly, which means that they're going to be collecting information about our screenings. Mm. And uh, what an easy hop it would be to go from, uh, yeah, so, you know, we have a database showing that, you know, millions and millions of Americans have got their depression screening. If we could just collect, you know, a yes or no, you know, very well, you know, made private, we'll never show this information checkbox on if, you know, this person's depressed or this person's not depressed. Mm. Uh, how easy would it be for then for us to make everybody safer by not issuing CHLs to people with that little check mark? Actually, there's already an know? example for that because um, whenever people go see a psychiatrist or whatever, like if um, they're, they're, they threaten to like kill someone inside of their meetings or anything like that, those <laughs> records are immediately sent to... Uh, go, uh, like the government or the police force or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, of course, your information is only secure until uh, the government deems it necessary to receive that information. 
and and do something with it. Yeah. And 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 the thing is like past collected information that isn't used at the time because they would have never got the law passed to collect it if they were doing something with it is going to get stored somewhere until 10 years later when they do enact the law that lets them use it in a very potentially negative way that would seriously affect your freedom after the fact far after the fact and to think like the article pointed out to think that you'd be able to get yourself off the government's depressed list um, I mean, I don't know if you've heard some of the stories about the people that are on the you know FAA's no fly list, mm. um, not the FAA, the DH, D, the Home, Department of Homeland Security, whatever mm. the no fly list. It's almost it's very very difficult to get off that list if you if once you're on it, um, and it's it's very easy to see a case made. Uh, I mean, people are calling for common sense gun laws today that would restrict people's ability to um, own self defense weapons. Um, in cases of, of mental issues. Right. And I mean, another perspective on this that I have is from the VA. Um, so I know someone that, that, uh, has to get some of their healthcare from the VA and it is insane what they put you through. Mm-hmm. Um, your quality of care is always random and up in the air. Uh, and, and, can you imagine the the army of doctors that they would have to put together to provide mandatory screenings to every single American? Yeah. Chances are so high that whatever doctor you were assigned or could get would be a very low skill. And who knows what they're going to assess you as. And, and if you go in on a bad day or, you know... No, even if you don't go in on a bad day, it's going to turn out to be a bad day because you're going to be there for hours waiting to get yeah. the shit done. Yeah. Yeah. And by the time you see him, you're going to be pissed off. Nothing gets done fast in a government hospital. Right, right. Yeah. You're going to be Not pissed. fast or right. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it's just, the entire thing is terrifying. And, it, and I think it's rightly, it's rightly terrifying yeah. to, that the government thinks it has the, the rightful ability to do that. And to your point, we still haven't figured out how this stuff works like we don't know on a fundamental level yet what in the brain causes things like depression mm-hmm. so it's not like we have the mechanics of this solved and we know exactly how to treat it every time all the time uh, in a lot of ways it can be a crapshoot um, and in a lot of ways a lot of these uh, doctors are are wrong and not only are they wrong but sometimes they they're influenced by their politics so if you have unpopular ideas or opinions uh, maybe they see you as a more extreme personality and how is that going to color color their report on your sanity and they have absolutely no um, there's, there's there's no way for them to be like a bias is going to take is going to play into it they're going to because they're, they're, they're not like um the supposed supreme court where they're like oh well, you only follow the constitution it's like they don't have they're, they're like okay well, i don't like guns personally so i'm going to make sure and pick out every single person that likes guns and say they're depressed not even the supreme court follows the constitution <laughs> not said it in the way that they should yeah, 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 yeah. yeah i know <laughs> it's like um and, and the perfect example again from the ron paul article was uh at one point homosexuality was a mental disorder mm. so um to think that um, we're putting the force of government behind people that definitely don't have this stuff figured out yet, even for even in their own scientific realm, is insane and dangerous. Mm. So that's why I want to talk about that. And then I think you had a taco story. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh well, every day, everything is a taco story. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if I had if I had my way. If you had your way. Yeah, right. <laughs> all day, every day, taco Tacos. story. Yep. <laughs> no, but um. So we were at a uh, taco shop getting tacos, and, man, we, we, were, we were going to town on the tacos. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way Clearly. There's no waiting to eat them tacos. But the uh, family next to us got their food, and they were about to start eating, and then all of a sudden there was a mom and two sons, I believe, and she's like, okay, guys, let's pray. And so they did this, like, prayer out loud, uh, before they was, would even eat. Yeah, and it was pretty, um, like, forced. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, no, yeah. If yeah, they yeah. had started eating, I'm sure she would have started beating them right there. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it was very, like, we are doing this now. Yeah, we are time to pray. Yeah. Like, it's time to pray. Le- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, go ahead. So, yeah. So, uh, what that made us think of was um, a recent experience we had. Uh, we were invited to, and uh, we got to see uh, a supercross um, race. What do you call it? Race? Yeah. Supercross race? <laughs> Shows how much I know about supercross. <laughs> what is it? Like? <laughs> 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 they just deal down the around or <laughs> just they run in the dirt? <laughs> Uh, no, Supercross is like a, a dirt bike race. Um, this one was indoors. I don't know if they're all indoors. Again, shows how much I know about it. But, you know, there's a bunch of uh, jumps and, and bumps and turns and mm -hmm. fun stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, it had been a while just because, you know, I guess we're generally busy uh, and work a lot. But it had been a while since I had attended a uh, big sports event. And I think this was the championship or some, some major one. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, uh, we were taken off guard um, by a tradition that we haven't uh, experienced totally <laughs> for years um, back when we, I guess, when both of us had different uh, political views. Yeah. So take it away. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, I, I can remember this in vivid detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so because, I mean, it's, it's paralyzing because, like, you're sitting there and you're, like, kind of, we, we didn't know what to expect from the event, so I was kind of pumped. I was ready to watch something happen. I don't know what, but we were ready to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like, all of a sudden, you see, uh, I guess it's called the color guard, where it's, the uh, it's like, representatives from each branch of the military carrying the flags. Well, first of all, there's explosions. <laughs> <laughs> there's fireworks inside. Indoor, the like, explosions, loud bang fireworks, yeah. sparklers, uh, things shooting up in the air and exploding. So you have our attention. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you got, uh, like I said, each each branch of the military is represented by one person, and they're carrying like the Texas flag, the American flag, and then you had the group of people bringing out the huge American flag so that they could go like this <laughs> several times. But, <laughs> okay, so this flag was like as large as a house. It yeah. was huge. There was what eight people to a side yeah. marching with it. it was nuts. Um, and they were carrying it out onto the field and they were doing this waving, so that yeah. it was waving the whole time. It was very, oh Woo! man. Oh, I was, like, was like, God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, uh, and, and I think, okay. So where we're going with this is that it, it was like a religious event, you know, yeah. it was like, everyone was like charged and, yeah. and the whole auditorium, you know, stood up, stood up and took their hats off <laughs> and like unbuttoned their shirt so they could get their hand close to their heart, you know? Yeah. And like, um, and yeah. they got just kind of pumped and serious and ready and, you know, freedom and <laughs> America and, uh, <laughs> and what the hell are we doing? <laughs> Forced to sit like, down. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so we're in a. We, we were invited to a, a pretty cool uh, box seat or suite or whatever they yeah, call it's it. Sweet, yeah. <laughs> so we're surrounded by people, and and you know, those are people that we work with and uh, have business relationships with, and um, and it was an intense moment. Yeah, uh, it was the first time I'd experienced it uh, since. Kind of rejecting the the ideas of statism right. and uh, patriotism, and it it felt that same that same pressure that people feel like in a church oh, yeah. when it's like okay everyone bow your heads it's time to or pray or when they're like passing around the the plates yeah and you don't put any money in and everybody's you know kind of watching everybody else uh, is he gonna yeah. is he gonna is he gonna put some money it's in like, there do oh, i see washington over there what the hell he's a, <laughs> he's a heathen uh so it was that same it, it was it like it showed me very raw that yeah. like patriotism is a religion oh yeah in in almost every sense of the term and it might be more powerful than Christianity in this country. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, it could have just been super cross. <laughs> <laughs> True, in the South. <laughs> in the South. <laughs> <laughs> but there was not a single person outside of somebody in a wheelchair in that stadium, yeah. uh, aside from the two of us, yeah. that were, was not standing hat off. Uh, at attention hand over, or hand over the heart hand over the heart ready to, to just Singing. sing that national anthem yeah yeah <laughs> and it was awkward it was and and so it start it's it's, it's about to start and i look over at patrick because i don't know what the hell is going on <laughs> and i say are you gonna stand and he says 
you can stand if you want to. <laughs> I go, I go, oh, shit. <laughs> I just start getting on my phone. Oh, I got to Google something. <laughs> I got to look up the lyrics. Yeah, what are the lyrics to this song? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, um, so there was two layers to it. I mean, if it had just been me in the stadium, yeah. I would have absolutely stayed sitting. Uh, and you know, that might've, I, I imagine if I had been in the stands and stayed sitting, some drunk asshole would have probably started a fight with me yeah. over it. You know, there's, there's that real chance that some people are so hashtag America that, you know, they'll call you out and I've mm-hmm. seen it happen. And, and there's YouTube videos of people getting called out for that stuff. Um, so that's one level of pressure, right? But there's another level of pressure is that the business people that we were with, that we we have professional association with. Um, you know, might very well uh, judge us. They'll make assumptions negatively. Like, oh, they're um, sitting down at the national anthem. They must. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they don't believe in the same religion as we yeah, do. You know, yeah. like are they not American? Are they terrorists? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so it was really awkward. Um, yeah. Somebody I recently told the story to was like, "Oh, I would have. I would have absolutely stood up. I wouldn't have risked it. I would have definitely stood up right away and just you know played along, go along, play along." You know, whatever. And, you know, I was, I was mainly just, I was mainly, I like to think ahead and I like to have plans for things like this. And this totally caught me off guard. guard. And so in the heat of the moment, I generally tried to err on the side of my ethics. Yeah. And so I just kind of sat down trying to quickly process the, you know, the, the, what, what this might do. Yeah. Um, And by the time I had started to get some of it figured out and the risks kind of weighed, it was over. Um, so my first instinct I think was good to stick with my ethics, but you know, in the future, I can't say that, you know, if I'm in a business situation that, that might affect my career, I don't, you know, that's, that's tough. I mean, well, the big, the biggest pressure for me was the, um, like there's like alcohol being, uh, drank there and, you know, uh, people might, uh, get kind of rowdy. And because uh, I've I, I, at the uh, Texas A&M football games, um, people would get yelled at just because they wouldn't take their hat off during the yells that we would do and stuff mm. like that. And um, dude, I mean, if 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 no one, if someone didn't stand during the national anthem, that, they would have probably started to fight over it. Yeah. So the yeah the message I wanted to convey, and I don't know if many of you have experienced this yet. But there is a palpable tension in the air. It's an energy. Ener- energy, not yeah, tension. It's right. an energy. Yeah. Um, to to respect and to revere the American flag as it's being marched out onto the field and mm-hmm. and to call that out. Like, can you imagine if instead of just sitting down quietly, you know, texting as if we had just not noticed, like if we'd have just stood up. And just been like, fuck that. Oh, yeah, so started, started protesting. <laughs> Can Holy you imagine? Shit. Then we definitely would have gotten We would have gotten shot. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they made such a big spectacle, spectacle out of it, too, because they got, like, the flags, the people from the military, the pe- person singing, and the fireworks. Like, it's an entire show. Yeah, of, explosions. Of yeah. the religion, of the force, of the power. Yeah. Of America. Of the Jesus of yeah. the yeah. flag. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the story I think we wanted to relate was that the just sitting sitting in that uh, taco shop triggered kind of the memory of yeah. of this um, this energy that this religion, this yeah. this um, belief, right? right? Belief in the state. You gotta you gotta sing your national anthem before you can enjoy the supergrass. Just yeah, like, just like you gotta pray before you can enjoy just, your food. Just like in football and every other sport, you gotta you gotta pray before you eat your food. Yeah, which then made me think about like football in general. Like, I'm an outlier. I'm not really like a big football fan. Um, I mainly because I don't know. I guess I was I'm a nerd in general, um, so I don't really get into a lot of the major sports. Uh, but it always feels so like base, like tribal. Like, um, I you know travel up to anywhere oklahoma wherever and they're like you're from dallas you must like those cowboys oh, no, i'm like no i really don't give a damn about the cowboys yeah but you know they change how they relate to me based either on where i live or what team i say i'm for you know it is different because we are from dallas and the cowboys are such a huge team even if they're not even if they're not good they're a huge team because like they're the top uh grossing team 
and uh, of all teams in the world. Like they make the most money okay. out of any team. That's why like that brand is everywhere. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just um, so it always it's always felt very tribal. It's like oh you live there and you like that random group of guys that play a game. Then I don't like you or I do like you or you know. And so that just generally kind of puts me off from the whole thing. But that also made me kind of think. Like um, recently I read a story that during the Super Bowl, there was an insane amount of security. There were a bunch of uh, police and government agencies running the uh, the stinger devices that, you know, take over your cell phone uh, devices and, you know, look for dangerous texts and, you know, phone calls going through. And then the FAA literally somehow magically took control of 35 miles of air around the, the Super Bowl building. Um, and it, that just makes me think like, wow, is this out of control? Like it, it it's insane. And the, my other, it, it's like, um, it just, the Super Bowl every year, and maybe this is a South thing, but I have a feeling it's nationwide, is is just such a huge event. No one pays attention to anything. Like, mm-hmm. on Super Bowl Sunday, that's when the government releases all of its dirt, you know, quietly under the rug when no one's paying attention. <laughs> We're going to make a secret uh, Supreme Court nominee here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just fired the Supreme Court. That's not really legal, but that's okay. Yeah. You're watching, oh, go watch uh, the Super Bowl. It looks like Obama, uh, Barack Obama gets to uh, nominate every single one of the Supreme Courts. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Justice. Done. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's when they do it because no one's paying attention. And, and, and no one's paying attention to anything that matters anytime around... Uh, Super Bowl, uh, Olympics, um, yeah. even elections. Like, no one's paying attention to anything to that politics. matters right yeah. now. <laughs> they're not because they're paying attention to how politics. How ironic. And, uh, yes. Yeah, they're not paying attention to <laughs> politics because they're watching the election. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And and that reminded me of Rome and uh, how when the, when the empire was Gladiators. dying – you know, they upped the, they, they put on more and more games and gladiator fights and got everybody in the Coliseum. You know, they were all worried and paying attention to this crap that means nothing. Um, while, you know, in, in, in real life, important things are happening and changing that they need to be aware of. Now that said, I'm not saying like we shouldn't, that people shouldn't watch football. I mean, it's just entertainment. Everybody's certainly free to watch entertainment, but this like national obsession with this stuff, just seems like part of our problem and i people might say like well i mean that was obviously like the state of rome or whatever that was putting on those, those gladiator fights but then you see articles where the government subsidizes several uh nfl stadiums and stuff like that mm. just so that they can be built and that football can be held at that location yeah like that it, it does happen like it it, it is state subsidized sports yeah and entertainment and i wonder if that's on purpose right but, no, it's like um, the American Airlines Stadium. I forgot the number. It was like almost four hundred million subsidized by the local government, local and state government. AT and T Stadium, the, yeah, AT and T yeah. Stadium, the Cowboy Stadium. Yeah, um, like hundreds of millions of dollars was basically stolen from us to pay for this thing that we then have to pay a lot of money just to park in the parking lot before even entering. You know, St. Louis just got screwed over because um, you know they helped subsidize their stadium. And now the St. Louis Rams are moving to Los Angeles, which means they're not going to have a sports team to fill that stadium anymore. And yet it's still not paid off. And no one's going to get the taxpayers a refund. No. You know? Hell no. And, and uh, yeah. I was really, I'm really pissed off about the FAA recently. Like, they, it, it's... It's one thing, and it's not a good thing, but it's one thing for them to say, we're going to regulate the, the skies to keep commercial aviation safe. Like, that's not good. We can do better without them, definitely. But now they've moved into private drones, regulating these little toys that we can have, you know, that we can buy and build and 3D print and create ourselves. Um, they have the gall to expect. <laughs> this makes me angry because I'm really into drones. Um, the think that they can just make a regulation that causes any free person in this country to have to pay them and put their names on a public list mm. because you're buying a little toy over a certain number of ounces. Mm. It's just, it's just like, I would never, 
normal people, a normal person would not sit there and think, I, I have the ability to make a law little that can make people do that. Like, yeah, that's insane. That's insane to me. And who are they to take control of 35 miles of air around the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. mm. Or some odd mile radius around uh, an airport. I mean, whenever we're at a, a local park, <laughs> like it, I understand there's a safety issue. I understand if I fly a drone over a freaking airport and a plane hits my little drone and crashes and might kill a crap load of people. Yeah. And that would be terrible and horrible. And, and I would be liable for each one of those deaths. Right. But then you're flying your drone over private property anyway. So, right. but you know what? Like the airport should have like a net gun that. <laughs> takes out any freaking drones or something like they have those they have drones that can fly after other drones and fire nets at them that take them out hmm. and there's there's even like radio jamming devices that you can put on a drone that uses a different type of radio that will fly up to a drone and basically do a local jam that'll make it lose its signal and that that's usually not good because then they just return to base but yeah uh, i mean there's there's a lot of cool ways that they could protect their area without these these regulations that are just dumbly enforced. Yeah. Like, like, would it be cheaper than the drone registration program? What do you mean? Would it be uh, cheaper to use those solutions that you just named than the drone registration program? It'd be a lot more fun. Like, imagine being the drone pilot that patrols an airport, getting to shoot down other drones. It, I, it would. <laughs> I just, I don't think that it would fly whenever you try and sit and tell the government that. It's like, oh no, it's your responsibility. Well, I'm not trying to justify anything to the government. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, it, it, there's no way to make a law in these circumstances that is reasonable. Like, we were in a park that just happened to be on the edge of a five mile radius of an airport, and, uh, and we didn't even have a drone. Yeah. You can see our other video for that. But like, I was just used as a tool. But even if we had a drone, we would have been flying it like 10 foot off the ground to get video. Um, I think I think that they're just grasping at straws there, though. I think they're just trying to find a reason to come up and talk to us and blame us for because something. it was a protest and they yeah. were trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah that might be like, hey, where are, where are we in, in, in relation to this airport? And uh, oh, does that look like a, like 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 a drone? So they're like, boom, let's go talk to them about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's all of my thoughts. That's everything that I wanted to talk about. Or right, what about you? You good? good? All right, cool, man. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, we would love comments and feedback on everything we've talked about here today. Uh, we definitely are going to try and continue to do these more often now that we have our set mostly complete. Um, this poster came in a little bit larger than <laughs> we anticipate. <laughs> it kind of takes over the wall. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're getting closer here. Um, if you have any recommendations on anything, please let us know. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. The Illuminati is watching you. This channel is not affiliated with Illuminati, even though our logo appears is extremely similar. Okay, Google. My calendar. Here are the events you requested. First up, you have a calendar entry tomorrow at 900. The title is work. Truth. <laughs> calendar. Every day. It's awesome. <laughs> every day. Does it say that? Every day at every work? Day. It just does work. Every day. It lets me know that I, I should probably work that day.